Alrighty, so today's an exciting day. We're gonna start uh, installing a Holly Terminator X ECU for the Mustang. Um, we got some big plans coming before the race season this year, so I gotta get this installed, kinda get it wired up, make sure everything's uh, working properly before we throw the turbo kit on it um, and then really utilize its functionality. Um, it's able to control all parts of the fuel and ignition system. All right, so first couple steps, got the seat moved out of the way here. Got the old computer out. It's a sealed up unit, hasn't been touched. Still got the seal on it. Very nice, good A9 now. Um, basically, yeah, it was tucked up there. You just got one little connector to unbolt and then the bracket has a bolt up there that you take out and then it just slides out of there. Got the ground unhooked. Uh, got this other connector unhooked. So now we just gotta feed that up through the firewall and start disconnecting it from under the hood here. It's gonna come out right there and then just start unhooking it and get the old stuff out. All right, so taking a pit stop here. Um, we did end up getting the old connector for the ECU out of the firewall. So now the harness is completely in the engine bay. Uh, started disconnecting some stuff. Um, I know this was for the MAF sensor. Not sure what these other two things went to. There was a relay on the firewall. And then there's a connector that goes uh, underneath the engine. I'll trace that out and probably pull it. Um, next, we're gonna pull this plenum off and just start disconnecting all of the fuel injectors and anything that's under the plenum. I think we're moving pretty good here. making some more progress here. So we've got the plenum off here. Um, we had to disconnect some of these for the time being. This injector harness on this side's been disconnected. Um, coolant temp sensor disconnected. Salt and pepper shaker is about to take off the TFI harness here. This is getting taken out. Oil pressure sender wire down here is getting disconnected. This is a, another coolant sensor disconnected. I think this map sensor is getting disconnected here. Boom. Yeah, and then just kind of moving on to down here. So we got all of the old EFI harness out of the car. Looking good. I think the all the old stuff is out and now we get to put the new Folly harness in. It's gonna be very nice. All right, so made some more progress here. Trying to take a break when I can, but uh, I find myself just rocking and rolling, getting stuff done. I have fed the new harness through the firewall. Um, that was actually a lot more uh, simple than pulling the old stuff out. No, I got uh, the injector harness all hooked up. That's hooked in back here. Um, the TFI uh, harness here, that is also plugged into the main harness down here somewhere. Yeah, ignition. Um, and so now we just got a whole list of sensors to plug in. Nothing too crazy. Uh, here's a uh, wide band. Um, that'll get hooked into the wide band sensor here. I'll put that into the exhaust um, where the old oxygen sensor is. Coolant temperature sensor, we'll be plugging that in. Idle air control motor, plugging that in. Oil pressure here, fuel pressure there. Pretty much just plugging stuff in. The main power harness, this looks pretty plug and play directly to the battery. But otherwise, just got some uh, general connections, some fuses up here and a relay. Um, but yeah, no, things are really coming along. Just gotta install these couple of pressure senders that I got from Low Dollar Motorsports. It's gonna be for the oil and the fuel, and they come with a calibration seat, uh, sheet for when I turn the Holly on. I will have to calibrate these voltage parameters into the ECU so they read correctly and accurately. 
Um, oh yeah. So here's one of the things that you have to do when trying to hook up the TPS sensor. Um, Holly gives you a little pinning kit with a connector that hooks into the Holly harness. But basically, this little pigtail I cut off of my factory harness and you put the pins on the wires. These colors match the colors from the harness and you just pin them in there and I'm just gonna slide these pins into the connector here in the right orientation. And this will allow you to retain your factory TPS sensor. Um, it's really cool because if you ever do need to replace this, you can just unplug it, go get another one from the parts store, um, and you'll be back in business without having to cut and splice uh, wires every time. But yeah, things are going good. I'm just going to start plugging some more stuff in and chugging along. All right, so here's what the TPS harness will look like when it's all done. Got the Ford style TPS sensor pigtail right there all nice and weather sealed into the Holly adapter kit and plugged into the main harness. So now we can just boop, unplug this, plug this right into the TPS and we're golden. All right, so pretty standard procedure to get this in here. I already had the uh, little brass adapter for this gauge. So took this gauge off, got the fuel pressure sensor, all good to go. Fuel pressure plugged in. So we're wrapping up installing the oil pressure sensor. Um, I did have to go to Home Depot and get a couple of brass fittings. Um, these are, this is a T with a 3 8 NPT female, female, female. Um, I got a 3 8 male to male adapter down here uh, in the compressor aisle where the air compressor fittings are. These other brass fittings came from the generic um, like pipe aisle where the PVC and the brass pipe is. And so um, basically the adapter is gonna allow me to not only use my oil pressure sensor that'll hook into the Holly, but it will also be able to use this uh, oil pressure sender for my stock gauge. And so yeah, just a quick little adapter, got some thread sealant on it. Um, I did have to get a reducer also in the um, pipe aisle at Home Depot. It basically just makes a 3 8 MPT into a quarter inch MPT thread. And uh, yeah, just gotta wrap these in some thread tape and wire them in. All right, so that was a pretty simple one. Um, just got them teed into the fitting right there. Let's see if we can get a better look. Oh yeah, nice. All right, so oil pressure sensors are plumbed in. Now I just, uh, this one was easy because it just plugs right in. But uh, now I am going to find the connector on the factory harness in here. I'll pull this back out and I'm pretty sure it's connected to one of these connectors here. Holly gives you a nice little uh, chart here that tells you the wire colors that you're gonna be looking for when trying to retain the factory gauges. So what I have done is Grabbed our old factory harness here, found the red and white wire for the coolant temperature sensor, as well as the white and red striped wire for the oil pressure sender. And I traced them back and I cut them off. I have reattached them already down there. And then also right there. And then the wires are sticking out over here. And so once you get that off of your old harness, You'll just need to find the gray and black connectors that are up in this area and just find the corresponding wires and cut them. And then you just gotta attach them there. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It is kind of the more um, confusing part of this just to keep the factory gauges. But realistically, once you break it down, it's not too bad. Uh, the, o or the ignition coil is gonna be very similar. Um, it, those wires, you basically have to connect the negative side of the coil to the wire for the tachometer once again from the factory side of the wiring harness and i did find it it's going to be a green wire with a yellow stripe for the negative side of the coil and then for the positive side it's going to be a red wire with a green stripe 
Um, and why that's important is the positive side of the coil is going to need power when in the on position, as well as when you turn the key to crank it, it needs to have power to allow the spark, or the spark plugs to fire and light the fuel. And so Holly does a pretty good job of trying to lay that out. But until you get in here and really start digging through the wiring harness and all that kind of stuff, um, the easiest way I found was my original coil connector. It's pretty shot out. One of the pins is actually broken. So you can just pull this out here, but found the wires, gave them a cut. I'll wire the white wire from the TFI harness. I have it sitting right here. I'll wire this to this. And then the positive side of the coil, I gotta make a wire and just wire that from the positive side right around here and just wire it straight into this wire. So should be pretty straightforward. Um, hoping we nailed it. It's always a good thing, you know, to keep some extra wire around from other things that, you know, might not be car related. For instance, I got all this stuff from a ceiling fan install kit. Uh, came with extension cables, all different colors, really good 18 gauge wire. Um, I know I get it from my dad. He, he, uh, he tends to not throw stuff away that, you know, might have a use someday. Um, and sure enough, uh, here I am using a ceiling fan wiring kit, uh, to wire in my ECU on my Mustang. So that's a tip, but let's be real. If you know my dad, he should probably throw some stuff away. <laughs> I think all of the underhood wiring is complete. Got the coil hooked up. All right, we got the power cables all hooked up. Um, yeah, nothing too fancy at all. We've only got a few more things to button up. Uh, the fuel pump relay where this green wire goes to is gonna be underneath there. And then I just have this 12 volt switch wire to get uh, hooked up and then just ground this um, down here where the factory ECU was. Tuck all these wires kind of up in the side run the cables under the carpet. Uh, the ECU is gonna be sitting right under here, underneath the passenger seat. Um, but I got everything else good to go. There's not a whole lot else. Once the plenum goes back on, I can start hooking up the rest of the sensors here. But we got all the wiring for the coil, factory gauges, those are all hooked up. I really don't think there's gonna be a whole lot left to do, so let's just get after it. ran the green wire for the fuel pump back behind my dash that green wire comes out right there and then under the carpet boom and you know we went with the pink wire with the black stripe for the fuel pump power wire um, i did end up mounting the ecu to the bracket that looks pretty fresh got these wires plugged in 12 volt switched wire hooked up to fuse number Fuse number 18, just like the instructions say. Bingo. So, uh, yeah, I think we're just uh, gonna work on putting the plenum back on here. We've got plenums back on, sensors are all hooked up. And one thing I did forget was this EGR valve. I do not need this and I did order a block off plate for it. Um, so I'm gonna go get that. It actually came in the mail yesterday. 
Um, but yeah, we got everything all hooked up here. Oh yeah, I gotta cut this vacuum hose and uh, plug it into this vacuum tree here. I've got this little EGR block off plate from Beefcake Racing. Shout out Beefcake Racing. And this is just gonna fit over this little port back here. Let's see if I can get a good angle. Boom. All right, so fairly certain I've got everything plugged in. We've got fuel pressure sensor, boom, plugged in right there. Oil pressure sensor, I got my homemade T fitting with both sensors teed in right there. And then I think we've got coolant temperature sensor plugged in right there. We got the manifold air temperature sensor here. We got the map sensor. Uh, the ECU has the internal map sensor, so we just got the vacuum line ran up there. Wideband oxygen sensor plugged in back there. Fuel pump wire, got that. Tap the fuse, got that. Ran the power directly to the battery, got that. But I did end up plugging the ECU in, so I turned the battery back on, made sure it was fully charged. Just got to... Turn the key on this thing, set up the wizard, and uh, yeah, let's see what happens here. All right, so we're back here. Um, got everything wired in. Just gotta follow these instructions to get the uh, bass tune set up on it. I'm gonna walk you guys through that as well. And basically, if we have any issues, you guys are gonna go through them with me. First step. Oh boy. We've got power. We've got power. All right. Where's the little shoe buddy? All right. So I think we're going to go to Wizards here. Choose the GCF Wizard. We got MPFI. Gonna go down to 79 to 93. We got eight cylinders. Three oh two. Target idle speed. Let's do let's do seven fifty. We got a stock small cam in it. Uh, we've got the Ford TFI. 43 fuel pressure. Yep. Injectors. We'll do OEM. Ford. Yep. Yep. No power adder. Okay, you can, yeah, you can set those there. We're setting it up. Do you want to see this? Oh, boy. Please cycle ignition. Operation completed. Okay. We got fuel pressure. That means the tune works. So we got fuel pressure. You guys might have heard the uh, fuel pump prime in here. We're going to do a TPS auto set. Successful. Boom. All right. Man alive. Look at the lights on this thing. Looking good. So I guess from here, I'm going to go double check, make sure I don't got any leaks. Ready? Really? And so I'm just gonna see if this thing 
scared to get close. Sounds like air is coming out, like with the in, like a vacuum. It's like a whistle. It's like yeah, whistling. I think I got a somewhere. All right, stand by. Okay, vacuum all hooked up. Yeah. Well. We're back here. I stumbled upon, um, basically it runs if I give it gas, but it's not idling and I'm going to go back. So from the home screen, I went to tuning or wait. Yeah. Tuning go over here to advanced. So, and then from there we've got advanced idle and we've got IAC control. And I had noticed this is set up for a GM uh idle air control motor and i need to go to a five liter ford i believe yep so we're gonna be cycling the key i think what i'm hearing is the idle air control motor Yeah, as soon as I let, if, if I don't keep it running, it doesn't want to run on its own, but that's, I can deal with that. Uh, basically following the instructions from Holly to uh, get my firmware updated so my computer can communicate with the ECU. Um, yeah, doing this real quick. So we got the first round of firmware going on. Things are looking good. All right, uploading ECU firmware. I ended up finding the issue, um, but it required me to use my laptop to change some of the idle air control motor settings. Um, very easy. There's great videos by Leech Motorsports and Fixed Body Mustangs, but ultimately um, you do got to go in there before the Ford IAC valve will work. Super easy follow their videos. They're much better than I can ever make them. Um, but yes, I had to change the idle settings and this is what happened next. Boom, baby. We're idling. We're idling. Oil pressure 55. Since it's idling and it's not whistling, I'm going to let it, uh, I'm going to let it get up to temp. And just let it do its thing and once it's up to temperature I'll uh I'll, I'll mess around with it for a little bit but we're dialed in big tuner guy now Sweet. man it runs good no we could and uh I figured it out yeah we're all look at this We're big tuner people now. Alright, so. Oh. oh my gosh. Sheesh. We need the boots. We need more boots. Got the fan on so we know it's up to temperature. Coolant temp says 200. The fan, dude. That thing is working. There's a couple different things um, that is recommended by a lot of different guys. So uh, we're gonna mess with some idle tuning. Gonna set up some basic uh, idle tables, uh, just following their instructions. But otherwise, we got Terminator X ECU installed, firmware updated, man. Can't wait to really start using this thing, baby. Looking good. All right, well, we're wrapping up uh, our first test drive. Running on the new Poly Terminator X CCU. The 
this thing rips. I mean, obviously I'm not doing anything too crazy, but definitely has power. That is for sure. Yeah, my fuel pressure says it's a little bit low, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna double check that once I'm uh, once I'm back here at the house, but. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Um, there was a couple other little things that um, is recommended to do. I did a static timing check to make sure that the timing of the engine matched the timing that it was supposed to be in the Holly software. That way the tables, everything line up um, and it's reading accurately. Um, really can't wait to start dialing in the, the tune. Um, we're learning through this whole thing. And so I'm going to try and document some of stuff when I do end up trying to you know, adjust the fuel tables and timing tables and stuff like that. I'm really curious to see, um, you know, how, how good we can get at it. Once we start adding the turbo and stuff like that onto the car, we're really going to need to know that stuff so we can make changes on the fly. Um, but yeah, overall, really impressed with how it performs out of the box. Just have to change those few uh, items in the idle air control motor settings, but really simple. Um, and it performs really good straight out of the box. So shout out to Holly. Um, and all the other guys that I mentioned earlier, Leech Motorsports, Fixed Body Mustangs, uh, they all make really good videos and uh, they made this process smooth. Make sure to drop a like below if you enjoyed the video and uh, so consider subscribing. We're going to be putting out a lot of cool content and you don't want to miss it. We'll see you next time and uh, yeah, stay ripping.